Building a full stack web application can be a scary thing. There's so much to consider when you need things like authentication, databases, storage, and so much more. Using AWS Amplify, you can create very in-depth serverless backends with a simple command line interface. It allows you to get your ideas up and running quickly and easily while using the tools you love like TypeScript, Next.js, and GraphQL. Recently, my example code for getting started with AWS Amplify and TypeScript was just merged into the Next.js codebase. In this video, I'm gonna be going through how you can optimally set up all of these technologies to work together so you can get started coding as soon as possible. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this. And if it helps you out, please remember to hit the like button as well. Remember, you can always check out the code on GitHub at any time using the link in the description. Before we get started, let's quickly take a look at what we're gonna be building. We'll be building a simple to-do list using AWS Amplifier's authentication and GraphQL API. We're gonna be taking advantage of Next.js's dynamic routes and using static site generation for the individual to-do pages. On the home page, we're gonna be using Next.js server-side rendering to list out all of the to-dos that we've created. We're gonna be implementing an authentication system for users to create and sign into their accounts, as well as authentication rules for the backend so only the owners of a to-do can update and delete their own to-dos. Finally, we're gonna be creating a GraphQL API as well as a schema-based database that's all hosted on AWS infrastructure and can be modified anytime via the Amplify CLI. To initialize your Next.js project, open up a command prompt and type npx create next app and then the name of the application you wanna create. Change directories into the application you just created and then run npn run dev to run the server. Once you've had a look around, kill the dev server and type in code dot to open up this directory in Visual Studio Code. To clean up our repository a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and create a source folder, move the pages folder inside the source folder. Then I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of the contents, including the folder of the API route. I'm gonna also delete the underscore app.js file as we're not gonna be using it for this video. To get started using TypeScript, the first step is to create a tsconfig.json file at the root of your directory. Now let's go back to our command line again and run npm run dev. You'll notice an error message saying, it looks like you're trying to use TypeScript, but do not have the required packages installed. Go ahead and copy the command that it asks you to type and also add at type slash node. Hit enter and we'll install TypeScript and the types required to use TypeScript in Next.js and React. Try run npm run dev again now. You'll notice that the tsconfig.json file is auto-populated to work with Next.js. Open up your browser and visit localhost 3000. You'll notice it'll fail to compile since we moved our pages folder into the source folder. Open up index.js and add one more directory with dot dot slash in front of the styles import. Revisit localhost 3000 and everything should be working. All we need to do now is just change our JS file to a TSX file. And now we're set up with TypeScript. And now we're gonna get started with AWS Amplify. The first thing we're gonna do is run Amplify init from the CLI at the root of our project. These are the settings that I'm gonna be using. Dev for the environment name. I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code for the default editor, JavaScript for the type of app, React for the framework, source for the source directory path, build for the distribution directory path, build command is npm run build, the start command is npm run start. One thing you need to know is you need an AWS account and if you don't already have one, there's a link to a video of how to get that set up in two minutes in the description below. Now we're gonna run amplify add API. Select the GraphQL and give it a name. For the default authorization type, we're gonna use API key and just enter any description you want. Give the length of how many days you think it should expire in. And when it asks you if you want to configure advanced settings, make sure you say yes. Then say yes to configuring additional authorization types and select Amazon Cognito user pool. Then select the default configuration and allow users to sign in with email. We don't want to enable conflict detection and we don't already have an existing GraphQL schema. This is where we're going to select a default template. So select single object with fields, and when it asks you if you want to edit the schema, say yes. Now we're going to make some small modifications to our GraphQL schema. We're going to go ahead and add three authentication rules. The first authentication rule allows owners to create and update and delete their own to-dos. The second rule allows the public, which means guest users who don't have an account, to read the to-dos. And the third and final rule that we're going to add is for private users, which means other logged in users that aren't ourselves to read our own to-dos. Now I can push all of this infrastructure to the cloud by running Amplify Push. Now we just wanna configure our GraphQL API locally to generate some files for us. Say yes when we wanna generate the code and generate it in TypeScript. 
accept the default pattern for the TypeScript files and say yes when you want to generate all possible GraphQL queries and mutations. Just accept one or two as a statement depth as we don't have any depth in our schema. Accept source slash api.ts for the API file. Now run Amplify Console to bring it up in the web browser. From here, you can see that we've deployed the authentication and the API to our AWS Amplify container. Have a look around and see the settings that you can configure and have a play around in the GraphQL API playground. Now let's connect our AWS infrastructure to our front end. Go ahead and delete all of the boilerplate HTML code from the return of our homepage. We're gonna define a get server side props method which runs code on the server side and then serves the data that it returns back to our home component once it's complete. First, let's define an SSR context in the method by wrapping our request in a with SSR context. Next, let's add a server side API request from the GraphQL API by writing ssr.api.graphql and providing it the list to do's query. In the return part of our get server side props method, we're gonna return the items that come back from our GraphQL request to the home page. Now let's deconstruct the to-dos out of the props passed in to our home function by the get server side props. Then let's use the data passed in to display some HTML. We'll create a parent div with the container styles and then we'll create another div with the grid styles and this grid will contain a list of all the to-dos and each item will have a link to that specific to-do page. Then we'll create a form that allows us to create a new to-do. What we're going to do with this is we're going to wrap it all up in an Amplify Authenticator which means that this form can only be accessed by users who were signed in with our Amplify authentication. Now let's create a function to create a new to-do. We'll be passing the event from the form as a parameter and we'll need to prevent default on the form to stop the page from reloading. Then we'll create a form data variable to capture the input data from the form and place it all inside a new try catch block. We'll first create a variable with the input data from the form, then create a request to the GraphQL API to make a new mutation called create to do, passing the create input as the input to the mutation. We're also sending along an authorization mode parameter to this request, which is set to be Amazon Cognito user pools. This means the signed in user information is sent along with the request so that it can be properly authenticated on the back end. Then we'll simply console log the errors and throw an error if anything goes wrong. Now to use all of our AWS Amplify functionality in the front end, we're going to need to install two packages. First one is AWS Amplify and the second one is AWS Amplify UI React, which is going to give us pre-built UI screens for things like logging in and creating accounts. Now let's go ahead and add all of our missing imports. And if you don't have this option, remember you can always copy the code from GitHub from the link in the description. Then to solve a small little TypeScript bug, we're gonna have to import GraphQL auth mode from AWS Amplify API. Finally, we'll need to import the Amplify Authenticator package. Now let's configure Amplify to use our settings from the CLI by importing Amplify from AWS Amplify and then import the AWS exports file, which contains all of our configuration. Now call Amplify Configure by spreading the settings into the parameter and also enabling SSR to true to enable Next.js server-side rendering support. If you check out the page now, it should look something like this with a nice little login page. All right, now we're gonna move on to creating a page for each individual to-do. So firstly, create a folder called to-do and within that folder, create a file called bracket id bracket.tsx. This is using Next.js's dynamic routes to capture all pages that are under the slash to-do slash id route. Here we're going to use Next.js's static site generation by using the get static paths method. Get static paths creates a static page for each of the IDs you return from this function. So what we're going to do is return all of the IDs from all of our to-dos by making a query to our GraphQL API called list to-dos. Then we'll map over this response and extract out all of the IDs which we're going to use to return as a list of paths to create static pages from. Now to provide each individual page the information it needs to display the individual to-do, we'll use get static props. We'll create another SSR context and call the GraphQL API to get an individual to-do by its ID with the get to-do query. Now we'll create the to-do page code. We're gonna be using Next.js's use router hook to make calls to the router. Firstly, we're gonna say if this page is a fallback, which means it hasn't loaded properly on the router, just display a loading screen. Otherwise, we'll just return the information of the individual to-do. Then we'll add a button to delete the to-do down the bottom of the page. We'll handle this button click in an async function to mutate the data. Chuck all of it in a try catch statement and as usual, make a request to our GraphQL API with one of our pre-generated mutations and mutation types. 
Once we've successfully deleted it, we'll navigate back to the home page. And of course, we'll need to configure Amplify as we did in the home page here too. Now we just need to make one small change to include the router on the home page so that when we create a new to-do, we get navigated straight to it. We'll need to include use router again in this home page, and then we'll just call router.push to the ID of the newly created to-do. Let's test it out. I'll go ahead and create an account and then create a to-do that says, hey YouTube. Hit the create to-do button and we're navigated straight to the to-do page that we just created. Now I'll hit the delete to-do button and we'll get taken back straight to the home page with the deleted to-do no longer there. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button. And if you wanna see more content like this, remember to hit subscribe as well. Thanks for watching.